Good afternoon, our great viewer, wherever you're watching from now. Take a drive on any street around and you look around. Every structure you see is either old, new or under construction. New buildings, roads and other structures represent the building processes and the understanding that Ugandans love to build. Let the skills for success help you build a foundation for career with skills. Now the learning environment in technical training combines the hands-on trade skills that help you develop with essential skills that enable thrive. Today, we are at Elgon Technical College, where the provision and dissemination of knowledge and skills that contribute to the production of an all-round individual in engineering, science, and technology is critical. Now, to bring this home in studios with me, we are graced to have Mr. Ochana Nicholas, the Deputy Principal of the UTC Elgon. We have Mr. Mataki Moses, the, acts, the Acting Public Relations Officer and Mr. Rugogam Ediger, the academic registrar of the Institute. Remember that this program is powered by the World Bank, Minister of Education and Sports and Scaling Uganda. I'm Andrew Chama. Get and be a part of this conversation on Twitter and beyond with the hashtag skills for success. I'll help you there and I'll tap your conversations. But before we dive into what Elgon does and all, let's first take a journey to the Elgon and we see what exactly is there. Good afternoon. Uganda Technical College Elgon is a government tertiary institution located in eastern Uganda. The college is nestled beautifully about 14 kilometers on Mualasi Road of Sironko Road on the foothills of the famous Mount Elgon Nambale. Established in 1931, originally as an artisan center for training of the World War I veterans in vocational skills, the college was elevated into a technical institute in 1974 and eventually a technical college in 1984. Ever since it became a college, the government has greatly invested in transforming the institution, an effort which has earned the college a great reputation for producing some of the best quality engineers in Uganda. UTC Elgon operates a semester system and offers a rich menu of courses including a national diploma in architecture, a national diploma in civil engineering, a national diploma in electrical engineering, a national diploma in water and sanitation engineering, a national diploma in mechanical engineering, a national diploma in information communication technology ICT, and a national diploma in refrigeration and air conditioning. The college also offers a national higher diploma in civil engineering. A majority of these courses are also offered at certificate level. UTC Elgon thrives in small classroom sizes that enable high interaction between the students and the faculty staff. It offers career-based competency-based training and practice. The learning is regularly enhanced with work experience through real-life projects, internships, learning exchanges and part-time work for the students. To consolidate its renowned position through the Uganda Skills Development Project implemented by the Ministry of Education and Sports, UTC Elgon is being transformed into Uganda's only center of excellence in building construction training. Working in close collaboration with the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, a Canadian expert TVET trainer, the college has adapted all its curricula to international standards. You find you are training on a carburetor. A discipline of mechanical is training on a carburetor, which is long, long outdated. Vehicles are no longer carburetor, EFI. So at the end of the day, the confidence with which they would maneuver to the modernity, the, 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 technical, the te modern technology was equally a, a challenge. But the curriculum today has been adjusted. The USDP has, adjusted, has adjusted everything, right from the examination process to the, to the uh, assessment, for that matter, to through the teaching itself. We teach on real items. You tell somebody, we are going to produce a component using a CNC machine. Then they go on the CNC and program it and produce an item. We are producing a gear, and you find the items, the play. We produce, if it is building construction, if it is architecture work, people go in the computers and produce architecture structure plans. 
Under this partnership, UTC Elgon now developed and introduced nine new range internationally. One, electrical installation, welding and metal fabrication, plumbing and gasoline construction, rayba, topographic and land survey, soil and materials tasting, concrete and form practice, brick laying, roofing. These skills packed courses only take a duration of three months. To support the delivery of these new courses, government has constructed nine world-class training workshops at the college, namely soil lab, roofing shop, concrete shop, brick laying shop, plumbing and electrical demonstration room, plumbing lab, electrical lab, plumbing and electrical shop, and a welding and fabrication lab. This has been complemented by the construction of a brand new administration block, a girls' hostel, toilet and laundry block for females, a generator house and other external works. This place in the entity was just a small quadrangle. The coming of the USDP, the UTC infrastructure, I could say, has doubled. So there is a very serious growth. Alongside the structures, equipment of global class has also been procured and provided to the college. We take a lot of pride in the equipment. The equipment are industry based. We are an industry. We are almost industries at, at learning centers. Let the industries take, take advantage to come and have their challenges sorted out. We have everything that industries have to the production requirement, but because we're only lacking the, the mandate to produce, allows we will be we would be out competing the industries. To streamline its governance system, the government has also developed an institutional development plan, a human resource development plan, and a gender strategy. USDP has also boosted transportation at the college to enhance the students' exchange visits and learning. We have a bus, I think it's the first bus we have had here since the inception of this college. In the 80s, we had tata lorries, and personally, when I was a student, when you're going out, you had to patch on a tata lorry to go, and we're very happy with that. But now, it is the first time we're having a bus. We have a pickup, which is helping us to coordinate the, the project. UTC Algon has been networked with Kasodo Technical College, Butaleja Vocational Training Institute, and Kaliro Vocational Training Institute for mentorship and networking purposes. The support of Northern Alberta Institute of Technology has also resulted in instructors coming from Canada to support the delivery of the competency-based courses to the very first cohort of trainees made up of instructors and students of UTC Elgon and its networking VTIs. We had uh, the first enrollment, there was uh, quite a diverse uh, instructors that showed great interest in, in, uh, in the welding part of it. Uh, some of them just had the theory base uh, background, but majority of them didn't have actually practical experience, hands-on experience. And when it comes to welding, that's where the hands-on is very important. Because to show the students how to put in a, a, a sound weld, they call it, with no um, discontinuance and all that, uh, the uh, enrollment or the students, or sorry, the instructors, um, not all of them had that hands-on capability. So if you come and take a look here, here's one of our good instructors, Baptista, and uh, he's one of our locals here, and he's got great hands experience, and as you can see, he's practicing an overhead weld. That's something that they were showing today. So there is a, a huge learning curve uh, for the instructors to achieve good welds. I'm one of the employees of UTC Elgon, working as a workshop technician, welding and metal fabrication. But I'm also taking part in the training being offered by the Canadian instructors. Actually, I've been welding for about 10 years now. But uh, in Uganda, much of the welding has always been focused on arc welding. 
where we have a simple arc welding machine. Uh, now this time we have been exposed to other different welding machines and even different welding processes. Yeah, so one thing that I appreciate from this training is that uh, many years ago when I was when I was doing the welding, when I was at one of the institutes, we learned welding and we practiced a bit. Challenge is that some positions, some welding positions, were difficult even for the instructors to demonstrate. They could not demonstrate them. Take an example. Now, right here, what I'm doing is what we call overhead. Many instructors will tell you, go ahead and practice overhead, but they will not practice it themselves. Now, this is the beauty we have with the Canadians that are here with us. They will tell you, I'm going to demonstrate for you overhead. He comes and does it. Then he gives you time to practice it. So you are, he's even able to come and hold your hand and say, no, you don't do it like this. Hold and make sure you look at this and that. The management and staff of UTC Elgon and its networking partners also went for offshore training in France recently. All these efforts have capacitated the institution to deliver very high level competency based training. For example, if you want to train about to an engine, you cover that area and you're able to dismantle an engine and assemble. Previously, you had to learn everything, you move, you cover this a bit of it, but by the end of the day, you are unable to perform. But this one here, you are going to look at one thing and have it incomplete, in whole. It is almost like a master's training. That's where you specialize in detail about a particular thing. All these developments have increased the merits of UTC Elgon in the public arena. The college today receives a huge number of Ugandans that visit the college for enrollment. UTC has all it takes to have somebody have a, a, a factory himself, in himself alone, be f without even going to knock somebody's office to look for a job, employment. We have all the equipment, the modern trade equipment that sort out the training challenges and the work-related work, work challenges are all equipped with us. The number of students have doubled from the previous number, forcing the college to adopt strict admission guidelines. The college has completed the training of the first cohort of students. It has now rolled out the new courses for all interested Ugandans to undertake. I want to appreciate the government of Uganda led by His Excellency the President and today the First Lady who saw it in their wisdom that it was important to have these skill centers first of all equipped with the relevant items of development. Word cannot express it in full but God is great. For us who have lived to see where we have come from and where we are, we only wonder what the next word will be. Um, I think I, have, I even envy the youth Everything is at their disposal. Anything, anybody who will pass through this and does not take advantage of it, God forbid, to be, to be sincere, God forbid, everything is at home. Ifo Kia, who got his first diploma from Uganda Technical College, Elgon, can quickly find a job. Okezia, who did a short baking course at Wakalasa Agricultural College, can start her own business. And Kato, who got certification in mechanics, can earn a steady income. Then so can you. Your situation can change for the better. All in a potential, enroll in any certified DVET institution and get the right skills to start a new career today. For more information, visit our offices at the Ministry of Education and Sports or our website at www.education.go.ug. You can also call us on 0417-893-600 or 0414-257-038 or 0417-893-701. Wow. Now you know what exactly happens at Elgon Technical College. What reason will you give your great-grandchildren as to why the grandfather, the grandmother, didn't fight against poverty with all this programming going on? As we're having this conversation today, I want to take a moment to reflect on all the content that we have shared and curated with you from the time we started the program of Skilling for Success. And take a moment and be responsible and go get a skill. 
Good to have you, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Uchana, Edgar, and Moses. It's an honor to have you. Would I? Edgar, you've not learned this yet? I have. <laughs> 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 Mr. Shana, um, given that your deputy principal, uh, Mr. Molima, is not here, but I wish I could see him. He's very ambitious, he's very charismatic and all. But I want to tap it to you, Oshana. What is the story of the Elgon Technical College? What makes it unique? What makes it stand out? And Kwanzaa, what is the story of Elgon Technical College? Where did it start from and how has the journey been like? Elgon, mm. let me put it the mighty. The mighty the, Elgon. The mighty Elgon. Correct. That's true. Is a something which has come and has come to stay. Mm -hmm. Just as you saw, it started in 1931 as a training wing for World War veterans, World War I veterans. Mm -hmm. But as time kept on moving on, we realized the need for <coughs> technical education, and it was made an institute, as you have seen. But I want to get back how this came about. When you get to our studies, there was what they called the, the Bazungus realized they needed to make some study. So there was the Bean Study Group, which led to the Fell Stocks Commission, of 1925, mm. which was which is also like uh, the Kajubi yes. commission, commission white paper yes. we yes. had in 1991, yes. something similar to that. So in that they realized that for the country to develop, we need to take people towards the technical aspect of it, mm. and that resulted into the coming up of Makerere Technical Institute in 1922. Mm -hmm. However, the Makerere we see has just ended up being just a small building. The rest has become very big, yeah. but the College of Technology is small. It has become big in other things. Mm -hmm. So the similar trend has affected the Elgon in particular as well, because we, in our age, when we're moving towards technical education, our colleagues were blaming us. Eh, why did you go for this? Mm -hmm. You could have gone for something better. Mm -hmm. But uh, we told them we need something which can help us do things with our own hands. So that was the consolation we gave them. But they were blaming us. But I think now they're realizing we are not in uh, the... Uh, have you met some of them along the way and how are they holding up? Uh, <laughs> I, I, one of our alumni was asking, was even thinking, he had never heard about me. And I mm. dropped in even my photographs <laughs> on the alumni group. I said, wow, you are around Amazing. and you are in the right track. So they're wow. quite happy about it. Mm. So when you look at it, the education of <coughs> these trades mm. was looked at as an education for failures. Correct. But contrary to that, somebody goes to Makere University, Chambogo, wherever is it, mm. they want the brightest. But when somebody is joining, the technical field, they want the dullest. So that is the hassle oh, yeah. we, we are having there. Mm. But people are now realizing, and registrar will attest to it that now the people who are ap applying are of uh, good grades. Mm. Yesterday, somebody had a, a son mm -hmm. in P7, has finished. The father, he called me. Now, they're discouraging my son that when you go for these studies here, you cannot go to the university. You'll just go for that trade only, and that is it. I told him, please, let me talk to the boy. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk to the whole nation. Yes, please. That when you get into the technical trade mm -hmm. area, after P7, you can join the technical and get a PhD. Right through there. From P7, you go to a technical school. Mm -hmm. From the technical <coughs> school, you go to the technical institute you join with somebody who has finished senior four. Mm -hmm. Then you go to, from the institute, you now come to the technical college. Mm -hmm. And from the college, you go to the university. Wow. So the path is as clear as never before. So dear listeners, mm -hmm. the path is very clear and makes students, children, the public, the community know that you can get through there and begin earning while studying and progressing. Mm. You can compare the child who has finished senior four and the one who has finished in an institute. This one is already able, able even to pay for himself for further studies, but uh, this one's 
are still, still dependent. Dependent, yes. So that is the challenge you have there. I so, hear you. Mm. Um, um, I, I wanted to tap into the registry for Moses to come in, mm. Edgar. Yes. <coughs> when, when you listen to how um, Mr. Chana makes it very clear that even during their times, when they were crossing from, you know, the normal education we're having to the technical, the thought process of Ugandans and his friends then was, why are you going for failures kind of route? This seems to be an undertone in the conversations we are having, but it's happening. How are you dealing with it as an institute? Uh, <coughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, what happened was, mm. in the olden days, they used to say, if you go for technical, you are an academic dwarf. Mm. But what happened was, they realized that you cannot have somebody who is an academic dwarf and can be able to construct a building. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he can construct uh, it is actually yes. brilliant. And all things rotate around te te technology. Mm. So they realize that for you to be able to construct a good building like this, you need the skills. Mm -hmm. So people started appreciating that when you go for technical, you pick things, you pick skills mm. which help you move. Mm. Secondly, there were not very many role models at the time. Then, yeah. The people who were making the, the their life who could really good, for uh, it. Mm. are those who had gone through university, they become district commissioner, they come out. The so DHOs. going through technical, mm. going through professional courses was seen as something that would not make money with immediate effect. Mm. So what happened is that we have gone out and told the people mm -hmm. that the way to go is technical. Mm. I, for one, uh, I have visited a number of schools in 2000 and 2007, 2008. Mm. I visited uh, about 39 schools, secondary schools in the greater Ushen district. Mm. Were you doing a survey or something? I was promoting technical education. By then, I was an academic registrar in TC mm. So we went out and told the people the goodness of technical education. When you when you're in the community, Zediga, what did you see? Were you met with sheer ignorance yeah. about technical education? Were you met by cultural strides or religious beliefs, or were you met by ideological bankruptcy of our population? Uh, I can talk about uh, sheer ignorance mm -hmm. and uh, bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. People didn't know that they have, for example, that there was a college in Vushegi which was teaching these skills. Yet it was there. Yes, it was there. It started, the one in Vushegi started in 1984 but as they a didn't technical know. college. I, even Elgon started in 1984 as a technical college. Uh -huh. But people did, were not applying to go there. What was the reason? Was it because they were not, you know, booming, media was not running it? The media was mm. not uh, running it. Mm. The, our parents had that mindset, mindset yeah. that technical education for is failure. for those who have not qualified very well. Uh. So somebody would come to you, by the way, my child has failed here. Can you take him on and take him? <laughs> And now, so if he has failed, how does he co uh, uh, He can't cope with this. Oh, this yeah. one is more complex. Yeah. The mathematics involved is so complex. The science involved is complex. Uh -huh. So, if somebody is not right upstairs, this is not work for the weak mentally. This is not work for him. Mm. These are the people whom you hear will construct buildings and they collapse. Because mm. they went there, they didn't even want, they didn't even pick the skills. I hear you. But now, we have, as you are saying now here, mm. we are trying to impress it upon the community mm. that technical education is the key. This is the way to go. To understand it, yes. And people have realized that those with the technical skills get jobs faster. Of course. Than the others. Mm -hmm. For example, we are running a course called uh, refrigeration and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. In the whole of Uganda, it is offered by Chambogo University and UTC Elgon only. Only two only. institutions. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, in two years, 
We have one of the eight candidates to come to land fumigation and air conditioning, refrigeration, refrigeration and air conditioning. Yes. And yet, everywhere you go, all the factories, food processing. We need air conditioning. Given food yeah. processing, <laughs> they, 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 they have full cold rooms which yes. they must manage. Yes. All, all, the air all the vehicles have air conditioning systems. But we are still stuck. 28 yes. of them. Yes. All hospitals have cold chain oh God. systems. Hmm. They don't have people to manage them. But when you tell somebody, come for such a course, hmm. somebody say, but what is that? Does not see it. Moses, you wanted to jump in um, earlier on about this very conversation. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm. I, I wanted to start from uh, the deputy's conversation. Yes. You know, Andrew, let me say this. Mm. You never play with someone who has a skill. Of course, that one I know. The other day, mm. we, we left Kampala. We were heading to Mbari. We reached mm. Mavira. We had a, a mechanical breakdown. Mm -hmm. We merely slept there. And because the you didn't know how to fix it. I'm telling you. You didn't have joke, a skill. Don't joke with <laughs> someone who has a skill. <laughs> I so hear you. Somebody is, is cold mm. at night. He comes eating funny things that you don't understand. But he's the one with the skill. He's the one with the skill. He comes, you know, checks starts and checks a few things. Mm. And we're able to move. But to to not I think we 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 a little missed a point sometime. Mm. Uganda Technical College Elgon started in in nineteen thirty one. Mm. To train World War veterans mm. in vocational and technical skills. Mm. I am imagining if we had picked from there. Mm. Because in 1974, it was uh, elevated to a technical college, mm. technical school. Te technical mm. school. Mm. If we had picked from there, some of the challenges that we are facing today mm. probably could not be there. Do you think there was lack of political will then? I, I wouldn't say that, but I think it comes from the mindset to, to his level of mindset. Mm. S last year, mm. a colleague of mine called me, said, Moses, I am, I am aware you work with Uganda Technical College, Elgon. Mm. Said, I have, I have my sister. She has gotten me all through 99. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they are calling you and they have 99s? Nine 99s. Nine nine when they have first grades, do they call you? No, they don't. <laughs> 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 Carry on. Uh, so I can hear you on the phone. You're breathing heavy. And, and the guy... The guy is confidently telling me, mm. could you please get for him what to do, a, mm. a course? Mm. Because the presumption is uh, technical education was meant for failures. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have missed a point. Mm. People who have done technical education today, like he was, uh, he was telling me about uh, the formal educational pathway mm. from junior. Yes. And this one I want to say it with passion. Not all of us are, priv are privileged in the same way. Mm -hmm. There is someone who is out there. Mm -hmm. He thinks, my son should go to Makerere. But right. he doesn't know the steps. Mm -hmm. There is, last week we hosted the um, a professor from Makerere. Mm. Um, at Elgon. At Elgon. Mm -hmm. She came with her team. She's uh, the university librarian. Mm. So she came with her team. When she reached there, she didn't imagine. What was there? What was there? Correct. She regretted and said, I wish <laughs> I had a young child. He would not miss coming here. Mm. And the entire team was like, you guys, you're here? Mm. Do you have, you know, ways we can we can bring our kids mm. to start from here? And one of the strongest recommendations mm. uh, that she, she put across, mm. she said, if possible, and I think she's going to work on something, mm. if possible, every vacist, say from senior four 
from senior six mm -hmm. would go to a technical college and be full and get a skill mm -hmm. before he thinks of other things you know you want to go to probably uh, to university and, and things like that mm. that is where we are coming from so for us we are saying mm. the issue of mindset it has taken us back mm. but this is now the time like he said at that time there was we never had the role models of course and uh, <coughs> anyone who would go to a technical college uh, who would, would find no space in, 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 in the, the community. In the West, they would say, I won't have a teko. If you mm. yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Shana, if I may come back to you. Yes. When he speaks of all this, that um, the issue to do with the mentality and all, how does it feel when a parent, like, like he says, calls you when, when the child or whoever they're taking care of has failed and they want you to take them on that's not the first challenge you face as a technical college but not being prioritized you've had parents who say that you know I've just taken off the the first five uh, mm. all in HSC I've paid for them now for this one I you will you'll bear with me <laughs> w when you hear all this do you still feel there is a lot of ignorance and stigma about the equation the technical college education and skilling is equivalent to the other institutions as well actually when uh, a parent calls me mm -hmm. in that direction I develop sympathy okay because sympathy of wow on the, on the how ignorant are you how, now look at this <laughs> one. okay he doesn't know that this one when he finishes quickly will he help him even to pay for the others exactly oh. so i just sympathize with you mm. and but however because the public says these things for failures mm. when we are demeeting you even if you got a a and there's an f we don't take you oh mm. Mm. we don't take you you because don't qualify. You, don't no? you have an F. We don't want people to say, you had an F. Those are still failures. <laughs> <laughs> and he was admitted. <laughs> <laughs> so, A, A, A with an F? F no. Off. no. Off. Aren't you not being so radical, Chana, there? And, uh, and uh, the, the requirement yeah. is one principal pass okay. in either physics, physics or, or mathematics. mathematics. And, and two subsidiaries. subsidiaries. Uh. So, you can have your A, yeah. but if you have OF, forget. Forget. But if you have EEO, you qualify. You qualify. <laughs> yes. But that one should not worry you. Because I'm now already worried. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> there are some parents who have registered AAA mm -hmm. and an F on the on the on the far end. Yes. And th for them, their mindset is actually, f they mean good. They don't actually mean to be that they are radical or something of the sort. What becomes of them at that kind of juncture? Uh, that juncture now, mm. we tell you sorry. And uh, we encourage you mm. to follow other steps which will make you get to where you want to be. For example, if you get the AAF, uh -huh. you wanted to come for the diploma direct, mm. we encourage you to go through this national certificate. Because in this subject here, the F you missed, for example, assuming it was in physics, you won't understand. Now you get to the class. We are talking about uh, Newton's laws of motion. You don't pick. The gravitational yeah. pull, electron gas. You don't now get it. You get lost. Mm. So you, you want to cope up. So you so do it for it my own good. I, I do it for your own good. It is better you have something on average through. Mm. We know you, you picked something. For you to get an F. In a grade means really you have nothing. You didn't qualify. You, you, you didn't. You either dodged the classes. You didn't even attempt to do something. But uh, Andrew, that yes. is that is when mm. someone went through up to senior six. Mm. But if and that, and that's why we always encourage parents, mm. please get to know the strength of your children. Okay. Because someone today will tell you, I want my child to go up to senior six. Mm. That's what he wants. But 
are you are you sure your child will be able to reach senior six and pass? Mm. And there are also parents who really understand that their children are weak right mm. from primary. Mm. But even when you show him that this is the way, he says, my child must reach senior six. Mm. So the, and it, the, AA, the AAF he's talking about, mm. it is physics, chemistry, or mathematics. Or it is physics, economics, mm. or mathematics. These are, these are subjects that are not... They're very critical. Yeah, mm. they are. So we... we, we and, the, and, the, and the, that one does not mean that you now that's the end of life. It is not. There is another pathway no, there take is until another you pathway get there. through, through which. Uh, when I come back to you, Edgar, yes. we have what we call the, the graduate syndrome in homes. Edgar has seven graduates at home. Ochana has five graduates at home. Moses here has 13 <laughs> graduates at home. Oh. It's prestigious around the villages. You've seen this in yes. the villages we come from. How do we shift the mindset of our parents? Because monkey see, monkey do. What our children are seeing, actually, they pick it from the parents. If the parents' mindset has not picked it, there is quite of a but. I'm sure you fight with these every day while you're in office. How do we shift our parents' mindset, the parents of this generation today, even the ones before us, to pick the conversation of skilling, that it's urgent? <coughs> the first one is this. Mm -hmm. People didn't know about technical education. Mm. Some parents have never bothered to, know, to learn anything about technical education. Mm. Now NTV has done it for us. Yeah. We must thank NTV first and foremost for this kind of initiative. Mm. Two, we must thank the government through the Ministry of Education and mm. Sports and the, uh, who came up with the idea of the USDP. Now, USDP mm. has <coughs> come up with this kind of infrastructure which they have given to the colleges. The courses, different competence the uh, programs models, mm, yeah. have been <coughs> developed. Mm. Even the so-called so many graduates in homes, mm. we encourage them to come and do these courses. Mm -hmm. This is the three months course. So that you can return yourself. You may be a very good historian, but at the same time, given the chance, you can become a very good welder. Mm. So we encourage them. Much as there is this syndrome, graduate syndrome. Graduates. Mm. Come with your degree. Mm -hmm. We shall make you better. Mm. Because for us to join this program, the requirement is what? Recognition or prior learning? Prior learning, that's true. Mm, the pre-exposure. Yes. yes. Mm. So we shall give you the skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you get the skill and get employed, you did well, you studied economics, mm -hmm. you don't have a job. You come to UTCLGON, you do a short course, topography and land surveying. The next <coughs> morning, you are in uh, somebody's... Uh, land. Somebody or somebody's land, mm. so surveying it, and you are making some good money. Mm. Everybody would say, now, what am I doing here? Wasted years before. So, mm. the parents will learn that it's not about how many degrees you have, but do you have can. employable skills that can make you bring bread on the table? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our president has always said that it's not that we don't have jobs. But the graduates don't have employable skills. The market cannot be well fed. Mm. The markets, the jobs are there. Mm. For people who have the skills. I'd like to chip in a bit mm. on that. Yeah. Uh, you know when uh, they wanted to work on the pipeline. Yeah. And they said we want 1,000 welders. On the pipeline. I saw people panicking there. <laughs> people, people <laughs> ran with their welding skills. and But had no qualification paper to certify they, that. They were not competent enough. Mm. So in that way, it becomes a problem. But back to your question, mm. still on the same. You realize that uh, in learning, mm. we have three categories of people. There are those who listen and understand instantly. 
those are just about 10 percent immediately yeah. mm. then the majority learn after they have seen from the other one mm. then they are still the laggers so we have already seen that but the the, the laggers are many mm. so we have to make them to understand but i would like to follow up that government is not sleeping mm. you have heard about the ndp3 yeah. yes Mm. And its strategic plan, mm. Yeah. Mm. how it uh, resulted into the Rebitivet Act. Correct. That is the thinking of government. The government has already seen this challenge mm. and is working towards moving the public mindset on the positive direction. Mm. Because I don't think we'd be able to begin talking from Elgon powerfully like this when the government had not put an input into it. Even deeply investing in it. And deeply investing to such a level as you can see. Mm. So government has put it that way. So we'd like again to thank government for this. Mm. And you'll see them on the other hand, government has done another thing mm. which is encouraging people on this side. Mm. You talk about the science scale. It is a deliberate Most. initiative mm. of encouraging people to, to get to, offer them, to offer sciences. Mm. But uh, this thing has moved in a, a nail space but now it has developed an antelope space mm -hmm. it is no longer snail space yeah it's an antelope space now jumping. it is now jumping mm. people have realized because you have children in the same village the, my yeah. son uh, went for a course and is sitting in the village with me here mm. helping me now in the business his son did this mm. and is coming to take our business money by building for us Mm. Yet your son could actually have done that. Uh, your son could have done yes. that. Mm. He's taking our money because he's building. And he has a skill. He has a skill. Yes. Before you know, another company has come. They're building a, a road across the village. They're connecting power. You have no way to tap into all those. You cannot tap into that. You are only tapping mm. into the villagers' money around. But the other man's son is tapping into international and mm. even national money. Mm. And now with the, the competences we are having, Mm. which are going to be uh, competence-based in an international manner. Mm. This is even making it more that we are even going to tap into international markets. Uh, and and you, you, you spread and give us um, the three clusters of the mm. lands. Yes. What do you think is attributing to the lagers? Because you say there are quite many, the lagers. Mm. Andrew, would you mm. allow me mm. before you... Please, yes. The mm. in, uh, we had a, a radio talk show mm. about the same. At Open Gate, was it? <laughs> no, it was uh, Big FM. Yes, yes. And uh, immediately after we stepped out of the, the, the studio, mm. one parent called me mm. and said, Moses, I, I have three of my children. Mm. I have built my house. But I cannot spend again building a perimeter wall. Mm. I want to bring them for short courses, and I do that. And I was very happy. Was he willing to pay them while they're doing that? Oh, yes. Nice. So what he's talking about, in 2017, was it mm. 2017, 2018, we hosted the mama, uh, first lady. Mm. And um, we, we are so happy for government. Mm. When she came, we had, a, we had a project for Islamic Development Bank. Mm. They gave us structures and equipment mm. that is supporting us in, in the training. And her emphasis was skills. Mm. And I believe since that time, it is, these are the fruits we are seeing. The because she was very passionate mm. on skills. Mm. And the Today, mm. from that time, it is it is not the same story. So it has changed. Change. It, it has really changed, mm. and that's the supplement I wanted to make. Uh, Moses, while you're responding to the laggers, what could possibly be the push factors of them, you know, being quite many as compared to the others? Are we doing something wrong as parents of the generation? Are our children so entitled that they don't, you know, do quite enough? Or as parents, are we? overly compensating for what we missed out. This is just a natural psychological trend. Mm. See that you'll find that whenever something new comes, not everybody comes on board. Mm. 
Oh, yeah. So it is up to you who is bringing on something to keep on pushing until they also get on board. Mm. Yeah, that's why I was talking about the snail space. And now where the it is only now it is a, an antelope's uh, <laughs> space because mm. now even the laggers are beginning to realize to that, care. that uh, this is the way to go. I hear you. Uh, when I come back to you, Edgar, let's talk about the courses because a parent who is there, he's actually very interested in this. And if you're a parent and you're watching this, just go right on Twitter and the hashtag is skills for success. If you put that hashtag, I've been positioned to pick your question. I've been positioned to pick your comment. But above all, I've been positioned to pick your thought on this conversation. Edgar, yes. what are some of the courses do we have at the Elgon, the mighty Elgon? Technical College. Now, uh, we have three national higher diploma courses. And those are? National higher diploma in construction, higher national diploma in uh, electrical engineering, mm. higher national diploma in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. Then we have national diplomas. Well, they are not higher, but they're just national, national diplomas. Diploma. Okay. For you to qualify to go for the Higher national diploma, you must first qualify with a national with a diploma. National diploma, yes. Yes. So the national diplomas are six. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, national diploma in civil engineering, mm -hmm. national diploma in electrical engineering, mm -hmm. national diploma in mechanical engineering, national diploma in water engineering, national diploma in refrigeration and air conditioning, mm -hmm. national diploma in architecture. Wow. Uh, Architecture. Yes. <laughs> I love that. The National Council for <laughs> Higher Education has approved mm. two new national diplomas which we are going to begin. That is National Diploma in Mechatronics Technology and National Diploma in Ferrous Wait Technology. Wait a minute. Before we go further, mm. <laughs> what is that first one you said? Metro? Meca Mechatronics. Mechatronics. What, what, what is that, Edgar? You're talking to the country. <laughs> <laughs> you see, time. part of the problem why technical colleges are not actually known, your language, <laughs> <laughs> your language is heavy. Break it down for my little um, one inch to understand. Mechatronics. Yes, mechatronics. What is that? It is a combination of mm. electronics and mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Okay. And it is designed to make us have an age with the international world. Okay. You know, while those people are ahead, you'll find they have things like robots, mm -hmm. drones, and so on. They involve mechanics and a bit of what? Electronics. Oh, electronics, yes. Yeah. So, so it's a fusion. You are just here with a, a, a controller. A controller here, yeah. and something is moving up there. Yes. So that's the technology of mechatronics. We're having it at Elgon. Uh, we're having it at Elgon. Uh -huh. The other one? Fellas metallurgy. Fellas metallurgy. Oh, now you explain that, Eddie again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fellas, something to do with iron. Iron, oh. Okay. So, this is the way you can manipulate iron and shape it into any Anything shape you, you want. want. For wow. example, if you want to make a body of a car, mm -hmm. you learn how to do that, and that's where we are going to go. Wow. You have yes. to begin studying from the iron ore. Uh -huh. in the mine, how it is processed to become wrought iron. Uh -huh. You move whether you want steel or you want another alloy, mm. and then convert it to the shape of the material you want. Do you want a, a computer box? How mm. do you get to that? Do uh -huh. you want the body of the car? How do you come up with that? That is the ferrous metallurgy. All this is in Elgon? Yes. yes. I now can't thank you enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, under mm. the, mm. the Uganda Skills Development Project, okay. mm. computer based mm. where we have developed the nine international recognized Trains. short courses. Mm. Okay. In, uh, uh, By short courses, you mean three months, six yeah. months? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Those are the competence based co uh, programs, mm. and they are mean in nine trades. Okay. And the UTC Elgon has been uh, turned into a center of excellence in, in construction, construction trades. trades. Mm -hmm. And that is a river, roofing, roofing, mm. concrete, uh, concrete technology, Brickling. metal uh, work and fabrication, welding and fabrication, mm. topography and uh, land surveying, Brickling. soils and material testing, mm. bleak laying, mm. and uh, roofing, rock. electrical installation, and roofing. then plumbing and, and then plumbing and gas line construction. Mm. And when we talk of gas and construction, we are not mm. talking about the gas from uh, the uh, the gas from uh, 
occupy this place? Ukraine. Koima. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah? yes. We are talking about gas line construction in houses where you may be having very cold winters mm. or very hot, hot seasons. Seasons. Like in Kapchora. Yes. I so wonder how people you, 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 you are providing the gas. And in Kabali, yes, mm. it's very cold. Chisoro. Yes. Mm. So you are, you, are, you are providing the gas that will heat up the house mm. when it is very cold. So when they talk of plumbing and gas line, People should not confuse it with the, the oil. downstream, upstream mm. models. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is for the house. This is for the house. house. Yes. I love that, Moses. When when you hear all this conversation, as you who has a lot of engagement with the communities, how have you opened Elgon, the mighty Elgon Institute, to the communities? And while you're engaging them, what are they saying about the institute? Well, um, people very positive mm. people are very happy but how are you engaging them and that's where i'm, I'm coming mm. we like i told you we have had we have had the radio talk shows mm. um and through which we interact with the, the public mm -hmm. uh, we we have we we also <coughs> online we we have platform you I saw your website is very updated, very fast. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's what I saw. We have Twitter handles. Yes, and you respond. We I do. saw responses as well. Yes. Mm. But with the community, you know when you're talking of the community, now we are, we are looking at the far community. Yeah, the but there is an imme immediate community. That, that is what I want to know about. Exactly. Yes. The design of this project was such that uh, you engage the community. Mm. And the... There was also an aspect of uh, of uh, <coughs> of environmental con con conservation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I saw that in the ECOP. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So we were able to, you know, have all the community invited, all of them. Okay. And the institute. It, then we sat them down. Mm -hmm. We talked to them, and whenever specialists would come mm -hmm. from the ministry from PCU mm. would be involved with them and then also share with the community. We have had so many engagements. But also you know that there are there are three there are around three <coughs> principles that me I believe in if you were to go in for business now. Mm. And that's why I must be I must appreciate this, uh, this how this project was designed. Like the former project I told you about, Islamic Development Bank, mm. it never had the aspect of, uh, of marketing Com strategy. Mm. But with this one, it mm. has had that aspect. You've and engaged so it the has media. It, yeah, exactly. Correct. We have engaged the media, mm. and we have been able to, to be close to everywhere. Mm. We, you know, the, the biggest, like I was telling you, the three principles me I believe in today, if you, you want to succeed in a business, mm. You must fight for quality, consistency, Correct. and publicity. Correct. I, I believe that one can really keep you in business. Correct. We grew up seeing very good brands of uh, beverages. Up to now, they do advertise, but mm. they have not been. Co they have never compromised with their, their the quali quality. Qual yes, and the quality. Yes, the quality. And that is what we fight for at Elgon. Move mm. anywhere. When someone introduces you, in, introduces him or herself as a product, or a former student of Elgon, mm. the high chances that he will be taken first. Now, if I may interject, mm. you see, when you talk of community benefiting, mm. community uh, engagement. engagement, engagement, yes, mm. when the projects were starting, usually the non-skilled labor force. Yes. Is usually from the community. From around. the community. Mm. All. Uh, we encourage the community to deal with us, especially in terms of meals, for example. Mm -hmm. Our main meal is a uh, portion beans. So the community is encouraged, please, they are organized in such a way that they bring in some other types of food for the students to, whoever cannot eat kaunga. And, and be able to eat some bit of matoke, mm. which has been brought. They are very good Irish potatoes, by the way. So Bali. the community, they organize in such a way they come and do that. Mm. Uh, we have also tried to engage them that, look here, this college is expanding. And it's yours. This college belongs to the Bahamas over here. Mm. We are going to be having short courses running. 
And these short courses, <coughs> these people would be non-residential. Mm. Engage yourselves in business. Start some building some hostels. The mm. business is going to be here. Mm. Mm. Some are beginning to buy the idea. They are seeing the light. Yes. Mm. Mm. Because now they are saying, ah, all this construction, mm -hmm. that means the numbers are going to increase. Yeah. And the college, so cannot, the college cannot accommodate all these people. Mm. So s the community is beginning to learn that the college is there, benefit them. Right there. Yeah. We're coming back we shortly. This is a skills for success. I'm Andrew Chamagero. The conversation seems to get much more interesting. We're discussing about the mighty Elgon Technical College. If you're watching this and you're from the east or around the country and you have someone you'd love to give them the gift of their, if you've not seen them, just make sure they go to the Elgon Technical College. We'll be back to and when we return, we'll discuss with issues to job placements, internship, and not only that, the partnerships that are needed, and we'll try to dive a little bit into the challenges they're facing. But regardless, we're moving. <laughs> of that meal you enjoy at your favorite restaurant is a skilled chef. Behind the strength of that building where you work or study is a skilled technical engineer. Behind the proper electrical wiring and lighting in your home is a skilled electrician, a skilled mechanic, a skilled seamstress, a skilled nurse, a skill. You too can master the right skill to become the best at what you do. Olina Potential. Enroll in any certified TVET institution and get the right skills to start a new career today. For more information, visit our offices at the Ministry of Education and Sports or our website at www.education.go.ug. You can also call us on 0417-893-600 or 0414-257-038 or 0417-893-701. Good afternoon. It's still Skills for Success. I'm Andrew Chamagran. We're live from Kampala Sunna Conference Center. And this conversation is powered by the World Bank, not forgetting Ministry of Education and Sports and Skilling Uganda. In studios with me, I have Mr. Ochana, who happens to be the Deputy Principal of uh, the mighty Elgon Technical College. I have Edgar, who is the Registrar academic registrar of the Institute. And I have Moses here, who happens to be in public relations. Those online, I really want to appreciate you. Mayanja, Mayanja Kalanzi, thank you so much for watching. It says, some of us are struggling now in life because of courses that are not paying off. It's never too late, Mayanja. They're saying that even with all that you have, you can come for short courses and you'll be in position to actually bounce back. So don't worry about that. Um, Someone here is saying uh, a very great, uh, great afternoon, Chamagero, and the NTV team will really want to thank you. At least for once, I believe that government wants me to succeed. I am waiting and watching to understand the issues to do with um, affordability. It's going to come. Uh -huh. This one says, a very great afternoon, Chamagero. Thank you so much for hosting this show. It's a great conversation. I'm watching it while I'm on my sick bed. I'm a little bit under the weather. But I want to know, do they have some scholarships? And if so, how best can I access them? They're going to respond to that. Last but not least, this is coming in from another parent, uh, Simeon Rege. He says, greetings, watching live from uh, Kikube. I want to appreciate the gentlemen in there, but one thing they have talked about which I'm possibly struggling with until now, it's the graduates syndrome. I now am not looking for graduates. I rather look for the skilled children. Thank you so much. Be one of those to send us a tweet, and the hashtag is 
that is skills for success. We've been positioned to pick whatever you're telling us and we've been positioned to go forth. Coming back here, um, I want to start with you, Chana. Let's talk about partnerships. How is the institute partnering with other entities to make sure that it stays afloat? So we, <coughs> we are a board there. Okay. We have moved, moved very many levels. Mm. Uh, but before I get to that, mm. I would like to say, how are you getting to the community? Mm. I would like even to say, right now we are getting to the community. We are now to the community. Uh, through yes. NTV. Yes. Uh, and then the other side is, uh, somebody would say, uh, the gas line is only for buildings, even mm. in factories where we are there. They need gas lines too. Yes. Mm. So now, back to your question. Mm. The, partnerships. the partnerships. How is the entity partnering with other entities as well to stay afloat? One, two, um, how are they leveraging on that to sustain mm. the institute moving forward? According to what is moving on now, mm. we have realized that for you to get out competent people, you need to know what is happening in the industry. Mm -hmm. And as such, we developed what they call an industrial advisory committee. It is one of the bases we have. Mm. According to the project, for us to move where we are, we had to twin with Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, mm. Canada. Mm which help us in the design of the programs up to where we are now, so that they can be internationally what? Accredited. Accredited. Mm. Uh, to come up with the mechatronics and ferrous metallurgy bit of it, mm. we had to partner with the Tiang Tiang group of companies. Someone has tweeted about Tiang Tiang. Uh, yeah. Then right now he's working with Tiang Tiang in Mbali yeah. after he came from New College. Yes. And then uh, uh, that is China Industrial Park. Mm who connected us up to Tianjin Polytechnic College Ch in China. In China. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Hmm. And uh, they, they helped us to train some of the staff in uh, some of the areas, like secondary refining and so on. Those topics which make us be capable in the, the ferrous metallurgy area and the mechatronics area. Mm. And uh, I'm also glad to inform the public that they donated us equipment over three billion of equipment wow. uh, to get to Uganda Technical College Elkhorn. The CNC, lathe, mm. what, uh, electronic components, artificial intelligence, all the things. All this is in yes. the Elgon in the Elgon Technical Elgon. College. Uh, yes. Get back to the USDP. Uh -huh. That is a very serious partnership where even we had staff going up to France mm. to, to train, to familiarize, to familiarize and train. on mm. the number of things. So that level, we have signed a number of MOUs mm -hmm. with the ERA Electrical Regulatory Authority, Minister of Energy, mm -hmm. and a number of institutions. Even mm -hmm. universities are signing MOUs with us, Bositema, mm -hmm. Soroti. <coughs> so in that case, we are moving on in the number of partnerships. We are not only looking at uh, international partnerships. But even local partnerships. We are also looking at local partnerships. Correct. Uh, in that in the form of partnerships, we even talk to the community. Uh, the interaction we have between the districts, the, the whole region has improved more than before and mm. ever. So in the era of partnerships, we are not doing badly. You're not doing bad. Doing How often does this committee meet, the one that brings together the industry players so that you can be in position to produce fit for market kind of graduates? The IAC has got terms and mm. conditions whereby it is a committee which is put in place and runs for three years. After the three years, it is renewed. And in their constitution, they're supposed to sit three times a year. Mm -hmm. And the only aspect which gave us a few challenges is the COVID restrictions, which made, but we are back on board. Mm. Yeah. I hear you. Um, Registrar, when we go to the issue of um, tutor trainings and durations, how competent are your tutors or your trainers? Yes, we, are, we, we understand a couple of them have gone to France, they've traveled around to familiar, <coughs> even understand better the, the terrain, how it's moving. How competent are they and how many are they? What number are we talking about? Because in your earlier submission, before we went for the break, you said you're trying to bring the community on board to understand the building of other business, but a status will plug into the, the institute's agenda. 
when we look at the, the, the staff, especially the technical staff, how many are we talking about and how competent they are as well? Uh, our staff are competent. Mm. The majority of them have what it takes to become an instructor. Mm -hmm. Others have gained more knowledge through mm. the trainings which the Canadian instructors were given. Mm. Uh, the number that we have on the ground is still inadequate. Yeah, sure, because this, this yeah, conversation is, here is going is to prepare your numbers. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> when you look at the lecturers and technicians mm. uh, appointed by the Education Service Commission, mm. I think there are only 39. So we are doing outsourcing mm. to supplement the inadequacy that we have. Mm. Uh, on the side of the technicians, I think uh, we, we are not doing badly. And uh, they have now mastered the arts of manipulating the equipment that we have mm -hmm. to be able to train the students. The biggest challenge in that, mm. in uh, trying to impart the skills onto these students, the materials, the mm. cost of materials That's has gone it. through the roof. Mm. If you are to train somebody to become a plumber and a gasoline constructor, the pipes and the roads the pipes, you use of the what the, the thing is very very expensive. Mm. But we are on the ground, we are improvising mm. to ensure that the course, the training the goes on is affordable. Yes, Moses. When we talk about the internship and job placements. What is the possibility of one going? Because I've seen, um, we, we had um, Chigumba. Yes. Chigumba as a technical college says, no one has ever left their technical college without a job. And online on, on YouTube, I saw someone asking that question. When it gets to the Elgon, the mighty Elgon College, what is the probability of someone getting an internship placement and job placement? But before you answer that, I want you to take us through how do you leverage on the partnerships uh, which Anna talked about to make sure that the internship and the job placement are well weaved into the, the, the ecosystem. Thank you. I allow me to start with the, the training. Mm. The of the tra tutors of and the, the, tutors. the trainers, yes. Mm. The training was done in, in, in two phases. Mm. We had the inter-country, in-country training mm -hmm. and then we had the offshore. offshore. Mm. So the design of the Canadians was that uh, they come and train our tutors, our trainers, mm. that would train the trainees from the college. Mm. And uh, we were there f with them for a very long time. Mm. And they also witnessed them training the trainees. Oh, so was, there was downloading of knowledge in real time. Exactly. Mm. Um, when it, uh, on, on the, 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 on, you know, it comes to uh, placements. placements, internship placements, internship yes. placements. We have an arrangement as a college. Mm. It uh, starts, you know, placement is 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 a deliverable, correct, and it is examinable. So it is not a matter of choice. Mm. The college allocates resources. These resources facilitate mm. any placements. That's the first thing. Um, we send out lecturers or instructors to go and look for places mm. where we would send these students to train from. Mm. So after getting the feedback, getting those places, we pin them. You However, pin you pin the places. No, we put on the notes boards. Okay. To allow students to say that to no, choose. To choose. Okay. You know, I feel um, mm. I can easily be better here. Mm. However, we don't restrict the students from getting out and getting places it by themselves. Okay, that's very inclusive. Yeah, mm. because w I want you to to remember we are training. Competent the people we are people. competent people, mm. but also we are training mature people. 
Mm. We are not dealing with the kids. Mm. We are training even contractors. Someone comes driving, uh, big people mm. actually. Mm. So we don't restrict them, that's one. So after that, what we do, we also dispatch them after assessing that each one of them has got anywhere to train from, mm. we allow them to go. Then there is one aspect of assessment now, mm. where we send lecturers to interface, academic lecturers to interface with the students in the field, mm. and, the field and the field supervisors. Mm -hmm. That's so, a tough one there. Yes. <laughs> and you are at the discretion of the field supervisor. Because he's on the ground. He's on the, no, he's mm. the one to assess you. Mm. If you are one person who has been coming late, there is a mark for that. Seven marks. Hey. If, there is one, if you are one student who has no initiative, in initiative you're not creative, not you're creative, creative. Mm. innovative, solving mm. skills, there you is a mark for two, that. Two marks. Hey. Are you social? The interpersonal skills. The interpersonal related. skills mm. now. <coughs> so, we, we, and, and you see, uh, sometimes people think that you see, I can go to someone's shop and sit there, mm. and, uh, and uh, when my supervisor comes, I, I, I show him, I, you know, uh, I'm here. Mm. For us, we follow you to the very place where you've been training from. Mm. Are you somebody yes. who follows the instructions within a factory setting? As given. As, As given. given. Mm. Do you come when you have the personal protective gear on? Because we give them. Oh. Eh? When they're going for the internship. When they're yes. going. Do you come with your helmet? Do you have the gloves? All this is assessed. Okay. There is a lady here called Faith uh, Chila. Faith, um, Faith Chila on Twitter says, thanks for the program. W I would like to know when the second load of continuing students are resuming the short course program. Thank you so much. They'll respond to that. Um, thanks for the program. Uh, okay. Where is the college located? What is the minimum qualification? Those ones are coming. Just hang in there. Sarulo, Daniel, do, don't worry. The conversation is going on. <laughs> we are still with the, with the, with the technocrats here, the, the, the real people here. And I want now to come to you, the registrar. I um, am finishing on, allow me finish. Oh, please, please. Just apologies. one. Mm. You asked me about uh, the ha placement. having them go and then get jobs. Yes. The design of the curriculum is that uh, First of all, you give a skill to a student. First semester, first year, you, uh, you, you come, you have hands-on, attend classes, you're examined. Mm. In your second year, first semester, mm. you now go for, for IT, mm -hmm. what we mm. call industry. Second, second year after the second after semester, se second mm. semester of the first of year. First year. Oh, okay. You go for industrial training. For industrial training. Okay. Then after the second the semester uh -huh. of the second year, yes. you again go back. <coughs> you again go back. Oh. Now this is where you will get people mm -hmm. who have displayed the right skills and competencies mm. and given jobs. Yes. He goes for mm. industrial training mm. and he remains there. He remains employee. there. And keeps coming to the institute just to study. And because ideally, <laughs> you've finished the course. <laughs> the only aspect left is just the, that IT. The industrial training. Industrial you know. training, yes. I hear you. So what happens right. in mm. sometimes mm. is that because these students have picked the skills in first year, mm. when they go for industrial training after the first year, some never return. Oh, they're excited. They're earning. They're, they're earning. Mm. Mm. <laughs> they get <laughs> yes. excited. They remain on the job. Yes. Then you begin looking, but we are having <laughs> a, a drop. There is a dropout here. There is a dropout here. Mm. Where is this person? Ah, uh, uh, the other. He's working in the factory. Uh, so has he ever forgotten about the course? When yes. you talk about it, he comes. Uh, some people tell him, yeah. "By the way, are you still on the course?" He comes and says, "I'm oh. applying for a dead year because he's earning." <laughs> And how do you as an institute make sure that you you don't lose such talents and skills that they were learning and now they have gone into we the, the them. earning spaces? We encourage them mm. when somebody has found some place to go 
and work, especially after his first year. Mm. We encourage them to apply, to withdraw from the course for some time until he's ready to resume the course. Okay. Some may withdraw for other oh, reasons, mm. yeah. financial or something. Mm. But uh, when somebody has found a job, we encourage them, please, we don't want to lose you. Yeah. Come and apply to withdraw from the program officially. Mm. Because when you just go, we think that you have abandoned the course. So come and apply. And you're not certified, you're not accredited. You're easy to fire <laughs> for yes. starters, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we encourage them to come, mm. apply to withdraw from the program. Mm. Then when he's ready to resume, mm. you come back. Oh, Chana, you wanted to, yeah, to There's some supplement. core aspect mm. which is bringing us to a turning point. Mm. As we talk about the IAC the industry, when we are designing this curriculum, curriculum, mm. <coughs> we look at the competencies of these we, individuals. Uh, we have uh, your company, mm. Limited. Mm. Chamagero Limited. Mm. Chamagero Limited. <laughs> yes. Chamagero has got tasks. He says that in my company, mm. I want somebody who is, who is able to weld the thing in this way. Mm. I need somebody who can be able to tie this thing always on a rope here so that the thing doesn't fall. Mm -hmm. I need somebody who is able to do this engineering task so that I can achieve this. Mm -hmm. So those aspects are what we pick out and become competences. Mm, to this particular... Yes. Okay. And it is those competences we now develop into a curriculum which help us oh. and we make it a thread. So that means yes. the curriculum is market tailored based. It's market exactly. tailored based. It was developed with the input Good. from the industry. Industries. Okay. Someone asked a question on Twitter, which I, I wrote down. And this goes to your channel. Yes. In the video, we saw a man speaking. In the studio, we see men speaking. Where are the women in the equation? Mm. Respond to that, Deputy <laughs> Principal. Uh, <laughs> you Do you allow girls to come at your institute? Do you employ women? If so, how many? We have uh, 165 women. Students. Okay. Uh -huh. mm. And uh, as a college, we have encouraged women. One, mm. in the governing council, they are represented. Okay. Even the non teaching staff, they are represented by a woman. Mm. In the guild, the vice guild president is a woman. Mm. You go to the staffing heads of department, one of them, two are women. Mm. So we are looking at the question. Uh, the only difference here is that it was unfortunate in the video, the principal was mm. a man. That's the thing. <laughs> and, the and he got me on that. <laughs> Where are the women at this? And D do you and find even here now? They are men. The coming here yes. is not by by gender yes but it's by position okay uh, so it happens that the academic register is a man the ira is a man mm -hmm. and the deputy principal is also a man yes uh, that's, so that's, it, that's it is the not challenge. it is not by gender mm. but it is by position by position yes so are, are, are women at the institute um promoted or whatsoever case or it's because most of the courses are manly we, mm -hmm. okay. uh, mm. I would like to say that actually the, the, the men, he, the women here even at the big positions than us, we're in the smaller <laughs> positions <laughs> because yes. when you look at the whole project is being headed by women. Correct. You go to the ministry, our commissioners are women. Yes. So they are actually the, the women the, at the top. They are, they are the top. Mm. So when you complain that there are no women here, they are already at the top and well. more are there down there and there are very many. Okay. Yes. Um, Register, uh, if, <coughs> if, if, if you're going to come in about the gender issue, yes. I want us to, to, to engage it with the, with the local context, the culture context, or the society context. Do, 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 do some families and do some young girls and women understand that these courses are not gender you know, exclusive in one way or the other? Yeah, we have... Uh, That's a very heavy year. Uh, Dead guy there. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have always encouraged yes. young girls to enroll to become mm. technicians. Mm. But as we are saying, the cultural background matters. Mm. They think that many of the courses in technical are men-based. Mm. But as he says, 
One of the delivery was of the USDP mm. was to increase the enrollment to at least 25 percent of the total population. Mm -hmm. We are yet to achieve that, mm. but uh, we are gender sensitive, especially when it comes to admissions. Correct. Leave alone the 1.5 that is added on. Mm. Even the cut-off point for women is usually lower to encourage them to Even come. if it's A, 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 F. No. 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 <laughs> 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 I hear you. So, uh, yeah. may, may, let me interject a bit. Yes, briefly. I want to bring in two ish issues here. One, mm. we, together with Nait, develop what they call a gender policy, mm -hmm. which we are actually implementing now to improve on that scenario. Mm. It is one of the policies we have. Then two, in selection, mm -hmm. as long as you are a lady, we first say, bring, first bring all the ladies. Okay. Do they qualify? Do, we, do they have the minimum qualification? Yes, they do. As long as you are a lady, first bring you on board. Mm. Then we begin our selecting because now the men are very m too many. Mm. So it is a deliberate mm. effort to ensure By the that, entity. that females are brought on board. Let me, mm. uh, he, 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 he says about a selection, but mm. also in class, mm. the last graduation we held, we had 1,113 graduates. Mm -hmm. The best overall was, uh, a, lady. was a, lady. a lady. Of those, how many were ladies of the whole graduates? Uh, there were 178. Yeah. Wow, that's a huge number. Mm. Mm. That's a huge number. A but, but there were three courts. Mm. Oh, there were three courts. Okay. Well, the conversation is going on. Some people are sending in messages. Yeah, please keep the messages coming. I'll be reading a couple of those. Chizito Jackie says, "I should have done this. I would be far by now." Mutumba says, "Wow, that was one of my former college. I did mechanical course for two years in 2007." That is Mutumba Chris. Thank you so much. Bianca Keith says. Technical college is 90% a theory. Well, Bianca, just to just to be very blunt with you, take some time, go around these colleges, you'll understand there is more information on ground than online. And uh, Simba uh, Dro oh God, Dobrosovic says very interesting presentation from this gentleman. Cyrus Simbide says best submission ever. And this one says that I am now thinking of taking my sibling to this college. Let's talk about um, something to do with technology. Moses. Yes, sir. You have a lot of equipment. The one that came in from the Islamic uh, project, then we have this one coming in. How are you maintaining all these kind of equipment? What is the strategy for maintaining this equipment? Because, you know, they will, they will actually, you know, get worse if we're not maintaining them better. Where are you getting that money? We are cognizant that uh, these equipments, if they are not used, mm. the tec the, their technology goes obsolete. Correct. And so we, they are meant to, to be used. Mm. The college has a maintenance policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the, that was during the, we had a meeting with the PCU and the commissioner. Mm. And the same issue was raised. How are you going to maintain this equipment? Because they have, they have been delivered to us, so they will not be coming to maintain them. Mm. But we are advised. Because we, like you had, we, 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 are, we are now in man manufacturing, you mm. know? I had Murima there saying <laughs> that you would outcompete the whole industry yes. if your mandate was allowing you to. Mm. So we intend. Mm to have this, uh, this equipment mm. generate income how and maintain how are you generating the income i want to la look at now the soil testing machines mm -hmm. we have so like surveying mm. the few farms with surveying equipment in this country mm -hmm. assuming we got someone who want to use it for a day mm. and then we hire it out. We hire it out. Mm. Can't that maintain it? That's good. 
So that is the strategy that we are developing. Mm. We intend to, if I may interject, mm. we intend to market these programs also and begin running them like a business venture. And for sustainability for purposes. Sustainability purposes. Mm -hmm. Because you are not going to depend on government and the donor to, uh, and donors to mm. give us the money. We must go business. Mm. We must advertise ourselves and show that we can offer this, mm. then generate income to maintain mm. this equipment and, and, uh, and also buy consumables. And, 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 and as a registrar, Edgar, I want to understand, how are you keeping your team up to date with the merging and changing dynamics of technology that keeps on, you know, changing? That one is a very big challenge. Mm. Because you take somebody, mm. you take on somebody to train in electrical engineering. Mm. At the end of two years, the electronics has changed. Yeah. Totally. He comes out and the electricity here is yes. big. <laughs> so it's a very big challenge. I don't know at what speed we shall remove. <laughs> yes. But uh, it is a challenge which we must acknowledge. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's pay, uh, now, like uh, he has been talking about, mm. Mr. Muniba was talking about, mm. people are, some, before the, re the revision of the curriculum, mm. people are being taught carburetors. Yes. And there's no even single curve with the calculator now. Yeah. So you must now move with the technology. Mm. But if so you, you keep on updating, updating and, and we are encouraging our people. Mm. Please don't sit there and have yellow pages mm. as notes. You must research. You must read. The internet is there. Mm. Mr. Google is there, as they say. Mm. <laughs> you must get to know the world is moving on. Fast. We are not going to give our students what, the, what was taught 10 years ago. Mm. Because that's what it's no longer applicable. And these are people who are going into the world of work where there is new technology. So yeah, you, yeah. Must up, you must keep on updating yourself mm. as a trainer mm -hmm. and update the, tra the, tra the, the, the trainees. Moses, you like wanted to jump the, in there? The, the worst thing today is mm. before you enter class, mm. you introduce a topic. A student is the first to give you answers. Because he's already in the sink. No. Mm. Like he said, Google. Mm. So what management is, 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 is coming up is to attach all trainers, mm -hmm. all instructors to industries mm. to cope up with the, the ever-changing technology. Mm. I would like to summarize that discussion in four ways. Please. One, in the new administration block, we have a research office. Mm -hmm. That is one uh, area. Then two, the attachment to industry. Mm -hmm. So that as soon as a technology arrives, it is also co-opted for teaching. Mm -hmm. Then three, we want, for, yeah, three, want to establish a business entity. So you. that we just don't, uh, a scenario whereby you are a technical college, but you are taking your vehicle to repair in your Kali. <laughs> <laughs> How? How can you even do that? Uh, you are yes. a technical college, but you are calling an electrician to wire your house. And to even build and even even new build. structures. And even when uh, uh, there is a problem with power, you don't even know where to begin from. You mm. can't mm. troubleshoot. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so in the Elgon now, mm -hmm. that area is going off. Is going our, our power problems are solved by the lecturers themselves. Mm. Our, we are encouraging the mechanical department also to move. To we are direction. now encouraging them to move to a level, first of all, whereby we understand what do this equipment do? What can they do to bring income? Mm. Then the last level of it is we are now going, we are planning for an open day. Nice. So that we invite everybody, including you. I will come. Think <laughs> all viewers, <laughs> we are organizing for shortly before the end of the financial year, yes. we shall have uh, an open day, possibly around April mm -hmm. or so, mm. so that people come and see. Then they see, hey, what is this animal for? No, it is a machine which can do this. Okay. This one is a machine which can do this. So there the public can be mm -hmm. able to know what mm. can. There are certain things. Companies are struggling with the problems. Mm -hmm. But when they come to us, we can get them the solutions. Mm. That's the work of the research office. 
you can have a challenge on how to make something to suit your technological problem. Mm. This one can be sorted out at UTC Elgon. So uh, we are encouraging the public. So when we make up the open day, mm. the public will be able to come and see what we have and what they can benefit from us. From the, from the entity. So in those four areas, we shall be able to... To be at the pace of the, the, pace changing, of the changing technology. Yes. Um, and also mm. be able to maintain our equipment because mm. once we make this equipment bring in income, then it's maintenance. Yeah, then the maintenance mm. will be not a problem. Edgar, when we come to the media, do you think the media has covered the technical colleges' narrative adequately? Or we are lacking? No. 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 Mm. Mm. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be it, nice it, on this, by the way. It's good. Mm. And we need to know why are we not it's covering it. It's good that we are here mm. today. And uh, it, it, the, the media is beginning to pick more interests in technical education than mm -hmm. before. Mm. Uh, you see, when, for example, they are releasing results of P7 or Senior 4, everyone is running Everybody's around. there. Mm. But when they talk of releasing results for technical education, UBTEP. you look for the journalists that are there. Oh, UPTEP is releasing results, they are there. So the media itself had no, has no taken keen interests to understand. in promoting mm. technical education or even to understand it. The media mm. is also part of the laggers. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yes. We are part of the laggers. Yes. We are getting it. We are now. getting it now. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we mm. have also not gone out to, to tell, tell people us. what mm. we are. Mm. For example, you say this is Uganda Technical College Ergon. Mm. We offer these courses. Have we ever put an advert in the papers? You'll say you don't have a budget, media is expensive. Do you have a budget for going to secondary schools yes. in the whole of Eastern and Northern Uganda to tell the children in secondary schools what you offer? Mm -hmm. So we should be having a budget mm. for career guidance. Yeah, that's true. Correct. In the schools. As, as, as technical colleges. As technical college. Mm -hmm. Say so you go and tell the people what technology is all about, what technology is all about. Mm. Uh, the other day, I, when I was invited to go and address students of Mbala mm. SS. That's a big school. And uh, the, the, the students started asking, but are you telling us what has been existing here? Or, or you just brought it new. yesterday? <laughs> the pain you go through when they ask these questions. Yes, because <laughs> you find the political leadership in the district does not know what is happening at the college. And, and that's why he was coming. Um, Edgar, do you feel at times that government has invested so much into the technical colleges but the political leadership around us maybe has not taken keen interest in that's, this agenda. That's what has happened. Mm. That's what has happened. I would not say they have not taken keen interest. Mm. But you know, the way information gets get back to the Laga is syndrome. Mm. Information gets to the people because I personally moved through all the districts. Mm. Butaleja, mm. Kaliro, Palisa, in the district offices, all those people informing. So they have got the information. Mm. But you know, the, the way Laga the, syndrome. the Laga syndrome is there. Mm. So people just get information, then they don't be seemingly know where to come in. And then, so it is up to us to say, when we're having something, we invite them to come, we just like that, mm. until they, they, they cop up. For example, mm. on the governing council, the local government, mm -hmm. where the institution is located, is represented on the governing mm, council. But we never get reports that when this man has been in a meeting, he has briefed the council like this. Mm. I hear then you. you get somebody coming, says, I am a councillor. Mm. I am the chairman of the accounts committee at the district. Mm. How would you handle this? <laughs> then you say, but you are represented here. Yes. Don't you get any reports? I don't know what happens there. Oh, yeah. So the, 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 we need also to develop bring, a deliberate approach. bring the local leadership on board mm. to appreciate what taken education. While you're doing that, please carry on the journalists yes. as well, because <laughs> my just were in the largest syndrome, like Ochana says. Mm -hmm. But we need to know. Uh, part of the reason here um, why the media possibly is, 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 is not understanding or covering the technical colleges adequately, maybe the language spoken there. Maybe 
we have not been enlightened enough about the future. The mechatronics. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. So, because, I mean, we, we could all say so much, you know, but it's always in the line of current affairs and all. But looking at all this in the vision 2040, mm. it means quite a lot for some of us. And I want to come back to you, Moses, here. What happens to a student who had pre-exposure to some of these courses? I was working at Ochana's um, garage. I know how to open an engine. I know how to lock it. But I'm a P7 dropout. But I want to come through the technical college that I get my papers certified that in case Toyota is advertising, I qualify. How do you handle me there? Um, you see, mm. some of the challenges that we, we go through today mm. are circumstantial and are not biological. Mm. Someone creates a situation and says, for me, I, now that I have failed, I think that's the end of the world. Mm. Just by some, probably you're failing. You were not meant to fail, but probably you had issues. Okay, that possibly you, at home or at financial home, issues. At you know, yes. financial issues. Mm. Like, if I may interject a bit. Just, just briefly, no. I just want to take his point home. I don't want to lose you. Carry on. <coughs> Someone who has had prior knowledge mm. on this trade that we, the, the trade programs we're talking about, mm. it is one of the requirements. Actually, it is the last requirement. Mm. Mm. We invite everybody, including a professor. Mm. You can come and acquire skills. The design of this program is such that you probably could have dropped out of school even before doing p7 mm -hmm. but you have prior knowledge you are attached to a certain garage mm. uh, you fix or, it or welding or workshop workshop somewhere mm. we invite you for as long as you can be able to write you know mm -hmm. to read take on instructions mm. you know so that one is already catered for it is sorted okay it's register you can now jump in here uh we have what we call non-formal training mm. non-formal training takes care of that of those people who are from say from the garage as you say mm -hmm. or from the carpentry workshops or what mm -hmm. so sometimes we organize that kind of training to cater for the non-formal to mm -hmm. the the people from the the field who don't have the real background of uh, senior four p7 or whatever mm -hmm. then we give them the skills mm -hmm. now the there is a, a qualifications framework, mm. national qualifications mm. framework, mm. which is being mm. developed. Mm. With this person who has never gone to school or who stopped in P6, P7, mm. has the knowledge, yes. can you train him, test him, mm -hmm. and give him a trade test certificate? Now, a trade test certificate We'll put him at a certain level. Is it level one? Level two. Oh is yeah. it level two? Four. Then the qualifications framework, which is being developed, will now bring Wait. him where he can move on. Mm. Wait. Mm. Keep on so and he now, if he is level two, can he be equated to somebody who finished P7? Uh -huh. oh. If he is level three, can he be equated to somebody who finished senior, senior four? four? So that he comes and gets the skills. Not necessarily with the background of senior of senior secondary school or the English we are using and mm. the science and, and whatever, he fits but he where gets where he fits and he has the skills. Okay. Because you find somebody has skills, but because of that qualification, if we applies, for example, for a tender, mm. he has a skill, he has what? Mm. But they say, what's your qualification? So the, the qualification framework which is being developed will take care of that. Nice. 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 Very, very... Very convincing there. I really love that. Let's talk about scholarships. Mr. Ochana, do you have some scholarships? If so, how do we find them? Uh, we, we have four forms of scholarships. Okay. One is private. Mm. <laughs> 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 scholarship. You sponsor yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's a nice one. <laughs> 
Yeah. The second form of scholarship is government. Mm. How do I tap in the one of government? Yeah, now right. I'm a typical one to our insane when, when, when the time comes, mm. it is always uh, advertised. Mm. And then you compete, you apply and you compete. Okay. The other form is uh, the loan scheme. Yeah. Mm. How does it work? You also apply you also to apply. the higher school financing board. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they take on you, you study. Okay. Yeah. So where do I find the loan scheme? Is it is is it something online? Is it within the institute or what? Uh, normally, they send information to the institutions, mm. and the people can submit. Like the last time, they submitted the forms to the nearest bank. Mm. Oh. Uh, yes, it is a loan. Mm. So you submit the bank, and I think the last one was to Centenary, Centenary, yeah. Centenary, yeah. Bank. Centenary bank. So a student gets a loan to study, yeah. and they pay in bits. Okay. And the very last scheme? No. Mm. It, it, you're sponsored. Okay. You finish. Okay. Then after finishing, when you get employed... Mm. I was asking about the fourth. The mm. fourth. No, be, be before, be before we come to the fourth, I, I, now that's the loan scheme. The loan mm. scheme. I pay as and when I'm done with the studies. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Mm. That the makes fourth sense. is mm. we have the scholarships committee in the ministry. Mm. And apart from that, there is when you find the volunteers volunteer to sponsor we have organizations organizations which are, which are mm. sponsoring NGOs. people mm. so they like advertise Fawe. for it mm. the fawe etc they bring mm. their students and they they are sponsored okay yeah um, now how you up, uh, how you get a scholarship for example mm -hmm. when students are going to sit for senior six or when they have sat for senior six they fill what they call the Punjab forms, public mm. universities. I remember. Uh, mm. Actually, they brought it to me. I, I never filled it. I said, I, I'm not thinking I'm going there. Now I regret. <laughs> now, when, you have, when, you, when, when they fill that, that form, <coughs> yes. there is a section for universities. Yes. And there's a section for tertiary institutions. Correct. So, a student is at liberty to choose. To mm. fill the four the courses for university and the courses for tertiary. tertiary. Mm. Now, when it comes to selection, mm. government selection, we declare our capacity. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, at UTC, we are limited to 160 government scholarships every year. Mm -hmm. So you say we have six programs. Mm. Within the six programs, how many are we going to take on as government-sponsored students? Mm. So 160, you divide by the six mm -hmm. courses and say which one is more popular, civil is more popular, so you give it about to maybe 40, then you come down 30, You rationalize 20, according, you rationalize according yeah. to the popularity of the course. Mm. So you select 160 wow. candidates. Mm who are now government-sponsored candidates. Ivan says, where is the college located? What are the minimum qualifications for one to join? Am I entitled, entitled for a startup capital at the end of the training to use the register? Uh, <laughs> the college is yes. located in Mbale City, mm. 14 kilometers from Mbale, mm. on no Mbale mm. Udadiri Road. Road. Okay, Mbali with Daddy Road. Yes. Please mark that. Uh, you come from Bali, you reach a place called Namusi. Mm. Turn right. After Namusi, you turn right, you go on Kapchora Road mm -hmm. for four kilometers. You reach a Nama. place called Namagumba. Namagumba. Yeah. When you get to Namagumba, you turn right again. There is a hey. Tamak Road. <laughs> there is a Tamak Road which goes to Daddy. Mara. So three kilometers from there. Still from Mara. there. Still Mara. Okay, and <laughs> can I find the institute on Google Maps? Yes, 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 yes Because yes, when yes, you yes. said turn left, turn <laughs> right, <laughs> get this. <laughs> we are going to get so uh, what much. Was, what was the other? Question? The other question was the prerequisites for one to join. Our requirements for all the courses, mm. if you are from coming from senior six, mm -hmm. is combination of PCM or PEP. Okay. Sciences. Sciences. Mm. And that is physics, economics, and mathematics. Mm. Or physics, chemistry, and mathematics. Not mm. entrepreneurship. 
not entrepreneurship. Mm. Now, when we are doing selection for both private and government, mm. the requirements are one principal pass in and either and physics and or maths and two subsidiaries obtained at the subsidy. Oh. So that means I have to balance my pass if I'm to pass. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. And for the people, the upgraders, mm. there are people who go through the technical institutes mm. and want to upgrade to do the proper. Correct. We conduct, we usually conduct interviews. Mm. And uh, somebody should be able to have gotten a second class art certificate. Mm -hmm. And he should be having a minimum of five passes at senior four. Oh. Passes, not credits. We are talking about passes. Passes, yes. Five passes. Eight, eight. This is inclusion. Mm. Yes. You are left behind. So before you go for a certificate mm. in a technical institute, you should be able to qualify on that. Senior four, senior six. Yes. Mm. So when somebody has his five passes, he joins mm. the technical institute and he does a national certificate. Mm. After doing a national certificate, depending on which field, you qualify to join a national diploma. Mm. So we, we have the entries that are those who are coming from senior six, and then there is a group that comes from the technical institutes, and mm. they also join. Okay. And short courses? courses. Mm. Short courses. Now, those are long courses. Now, the short courses. The short courses, mm. the requirement is recognition of prior uh, learning. learning. Okay. Mm. I really love that. Um, Mr. Chana, let's talk about the challenges. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the good things and how the Institute runs and all that. It's very promising. I'm very excited and I really want to commend you on the work you're doing there. Mm. But what are some of the challenges you're facing as an institution? Uh, challenges are always there mm. and your ability to manage them is what makes you correct uh, first of all one of the biggest challenges money will never be enough in adequate funding <laughs> so <laughs> you you have to get ways of moving whether money is enough or not not enough that's mm. one challenge uh, for example now we have had the structures mm. constructed but they are in an open yeah place they are not fenced. Mm. That one requires money to have them fenced. That's a big challenge. Mm. Because and there is a saying that in every community exists every type of mm. person. person. Yes. There are good people, they but also vandalized, vandalized there are also, also bad people mm. in every community. Because mm. uh, the contractors experience, they could put some few things. By the time they come back tomorrow, they find something as what? It's been taken. Mm. So that is a, a challenge. Now the next challenge is we have had an increase in infrastructure and equipment. Mm. That means now there's an increase in the cost of running those machines mm. in the form of power, mm. water, and human capital. That means so you have to recruit more. Mm. You, 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 to have pay to, more. you have to pay more. Mm. You cannot, you, in a power consumption, uh, maybe this is a very big challenge mm. which uh, I need the maybe government to address mm. because the utility company <coughs> char charges power even in institutions in what they call maximum KVA demand charge. Mm. A maximum KVA demand charge in terms of power is that the moment you switch on the highest value of the machinery you have there, it detects that you have, you have loaded 500 mm. kilowatts, then whether you have used it or, or not, not mm. they multiply that times a cost 16,000. Mm. So you first pay that amount of money. Before you even so use Before it. you even use. Oh, yeah. They call it maximum KVA demand, maximum charge. Mm. Then you now begin counting the units. Yeah, I couldn't use. You are now going to use. Then you again begin paying that one according to. This How one is my need? request now to to the utility companies that mm. these are training institutions it should be given some which subsidies. are supposed to help the public now if you are going to charge a, a, a maximum demand charge on such equipment mm. then we are just killing the institutions mm. correct 
So it is a request which I want the government to listen to mm. and see that we save the institutions from discharge. Mm. On the power, because of a connection, you are just paying because you are connected to it. I hear you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Edgar, what are your parting shots as we're finalizing this conversation? You know we can have a conversation until tomorrow, but because of time, mm. um, allow me to finalize the conversation. What are your parting shots? One, to the government. Two, to the Wanainchi. I want to encourage the Wanainchi mm. that uh, technical education is now the way to go, mm. and that they should embrace it. They are right there. Just we, we, intend, uh, we, we, we are also asking, mm. we are also appealing government, open up and give us more slots mm -hmm. we usually leave a number of students who could become good engineers tomorrow mm -hmm. but it's because some of them cannot afford the costs of private sponsorship mm -hmm. and yet they have qualified in one or another mm -hmm. so the number of 160 per year is very small yeah. and even given the infrastructure that we have now it's still small. So we can, if they can increase the numbers, mm. so that uh, a number of people can access mm. uh, technical education. The training. Uh, we want to thank government, mm. as we conclude, for the very good job they have done to develop the infrastructure for technical colleges. Mm. UT Silicon, which started in 1930 as a, as a with a very little but very few things. Mm. Call it a Juakali. Juakali yeah. model. Now <laughs> has developed into <laughs> a center of excellence. A center of excellence mm. with modern equipment mm. and we can manage anything. So once the government and the Minister of Education for the good job they have done. Mm. And uh, we pray that uh, if they can increase the budget for running the colleges, then we would do better in training of our students. Thank you so much, Edgar Moses. Welcome. What are your parting shots to this country and uh, especially to the young generation where you and I come from? I want to appreciate the government mm. for the initiative of skilling Uganda. And uh, the same note, I want to appreciate the project coordination unit that has uh, made it possible for us to be here I also want to let you know mm. that today at Uganda Technical College Eligon mm. is almost like a public holiday. Why? People are watching us. <laughs> right from students wow. and, and staff. From and and, 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 and when staff. is the admission? I don't want you to miss that. If someone wants to, ad to come for admission, are the admission still going on? No. No, mm. as of now. Mm. <coughs> the next intake is going to be now August. in August. August. In August. In August. Okay. August. Mm. I also want to appreciate um, the Ministry of Education and Sports mm -hmm. for every endeavor they have done to see that uh, these programs are affordable mm. and uh, accessible All to right. the public. And on the side of the college management, we are so proud uh, and I want to thank our management so much. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank you, Andrew. Thank you. You've been so exceptional. And NTV. And yes. NTV. Correct. You've been mm. really exceptional indeed. Mm. And, and, and that is a skill that yes. not all of us can really. Of, I'm coming for another skill <laughs> now with the hands. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. allow me to convey my <coughs> greetings mm. to everyone. Mm. To the young, uh, in young generation. Young generation. Mm. The people we see who are successful today, they have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. When you see someone driving today and you, you, you think you're late, you're going to crash. You are going to crash. Mm. It is very important for us to respect the process. Let's move at the speed that God has, has put ahead of us mm. and we shall succeed. Thank you so much. Um, the conversation could go on and on, but I can't thank you enough, our dear viewer. And to those of you at the mighty um, Elgon Technical College, I understand today it's more like a public holiday. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being such a great team. The support team, the support staff, the Ascaris, the cooks, um, every other person at every other department really want to thank you. But to you, the viewer, now the call to action is to you. 
you can never get information until when the universe believes that you actually qualify for this information. I believe in the law of attraction and you who has been watching us today, the universe is telling you something. Go get a skill. It doesn't matter what age you are or how much funds you have. The moment you're very intentional about this, just go get a skill. And this is the government agenda. As the country is shifting the gears at the different level and you need to be cognizant of the vision 2040 and what is your contribution towards that vision. Today in studios, I had Mr. Uchana Nicholas, the deputy principal of the mighty Elgon Technical College. I had Mr. Mataki Moses, the acting institutional public relations officer. And I had Mr. Rugogam, Edgar, the academic registrar. And this program was part by the World Bank, the Minister of Education and Sports. Not forgetting Scaling Uganda. I really want to appreciate you until next Wednesday. But the call to action is get a skill, fight poverty. Good afternoon. <laughs>